How's it going, church family? Happy Easter! It's so good to be with all of you via our live stream today. And I want to especially make sure to welcome those of you who are joining us for the very first time. My name's Chad, and I have the honor of being one of the pastors here at C4. And listen, maybe a family member or a friend invited you, and this year you didn't have any excuse not to come to Easter service because, well, there's nothing else to do, is there? <laughs> nothing else to do. I'm believing that there's a reason that you are here today and that God is going to do something powerful in all of our lives today. Speaking of Easter, I want to start this morning by pointing out the obvious that this year, Easter looks a lot different than normal, doesn't it? I mean, that might seem like a given based on how the last month or so has gone for us, but I'll be the first one to admit that Easter just doesn't feel like Easter this year. This might sound silly, but my kids have a lot of cousins, and every year I look forward to our family all getting together and doing a big family Easter egg hunt for the kids, all of the cousins playing together in the yard. But we can't do that this year. Whether you consider yourself a church-going person or not, I think we can all agree that Easter is different this year. No big family or community egg hunts to look forward to for the kids. No brunches happening. And the thing that many of us would look forward to the most, church service, is non-existent, at least not in person. In fact, right now, I'm sitting by myself in an empty sanctuary where typically every year this place would be packed to the brim with all of your lovely faces wearing your Easter best. But in all seriousness, if I can be completely honest, man, it doesn't feel the same this year. For many of us, we've been stuck at home and it's hard to focus on Easter and celebration when, when our minds have been so fixated on the question of, of just what will happen to us tomorrow. Where every year Easter would bring joy and celebration and memories, this year, maybe you find yourself wrestling with emotions like fear, worry, and anxiety. So I want to ask you to just, let's just pause and take a moment right now to think about this question, how are you doing? How are you doing? How does this Easter feel for you? And if you're watching this and you say, yeah, Chad, if I'm being honest, I've been dealing with some of those emotions. And a question you might have this morning, it's a very real question is, where can I find that joy again? Where can I find peace? Is it even possible to find those things in the current situation we're living through? And if that's you, can I tell you some good news this morning? Can I give you some hope today? That number one, absolutely yes. Absolutely yes, I believe that you can find peace. You can find joy in this time. And number two, that you're not alone. You're not alone. In fact, in Scripture, at the very first Easter, Jesus' closest friends felt some of those same emotions that you and I are feeling today. And they were probably asking some of those same questions as well. Just like how everything has changed in our world around us, their world got rocked as well. Not only was their friend Jesus brutally murdered, but they had left everything that they had to follow Him, and they were probably going to be killed next. In John chapter 20, verse 19, Scripture tells us that it was the Sunday evening, the very evening of the first Easter, Jesus' tomb is empty, and His disciples weren't celebrating. No, Scripture tells us that they were meeting behind locked doors in fear of being killed by the Jews. Does that sound familiar to you? Being stuck in a home in fear? I mean, try and put yourselves in these guys' shoes. It's like they were under self-quarantine, fearing for their lives. They didn't want to go outside. Wearing a mask wasn't going to help. Social distancing wasn't going to help. These guys were hiding in fear of being killed when suddenly, suddenly Jesus was standing there among them in the midst of their deepest fear and anxiety, Jesus becomes present with them and watch the first thing that He says. The first thing He says is, Peace be with you. And as He spoke, He showed them the wounds in His hands and in His side, it says. And if you know anything about the history of that culture or, or the time period, these words, Peace be with you, was actually a common greeting. It's kind of like throwing up a shaka saying, how's it, right? But I think that it was more to that. 
I don't think it was just a greeting. See, because the word for peace that Jesus uses here can be translated to the Greek word erene, erene. And erene means not just peace like some type of tranquility, but literally wholeness. Wholeness in our mind, wholeness in our body, wholeness in our spirit. See, Jesus' presence, just by Him being there, brought peace, brought things back into place, and brought the wholeness that these disciples of His were seeking after. And can I tell you, family, can I tell you that His presence, just by Him being with us, can bring that same peace that you and I are seeking after today as well. It can bring things back into place in your life and mine. Listen, some of you are probably struggling through a tough time right now. Maybe you just lost your job and you're thinking through questions like, how are we going to pay our rent this month? And how are we going to make it with our bills? Or maybe for you, it's a health issue and you're, you're walking through and you're concerned about how coronavirus will affect yourself, maybe a family member or a friend. Or you might, be, you might just be a parent today. And this whole quarantine thing sounded like a great idea with your kids for about the first 10 minutes. You know what I mean? And now you're just looking for some peace. You're just looking for some erene inside of your home. Can I tell you again that Jesus' presence is what brings us our peace? In fact, the Bible calls Jesus the Prince of Peace. And I believe that right now, right now today, He's calling out. Jesus is actually calling out and He's saying, Irene. He's calling His peace over every stress and strain that you and I are walking through in our lives. But the question is, are we listening and will we choose to receive it? But watch this, not only does, does it say that Jesus' presence brought peace, but the very next verse says that as the disciples saw Jesus and He spoke peace over them, they were filled with joy. They were filled with joy when they saw the Lord. His presence, again, just by Him being there, brought joy that they needed so badly. Can I share with you this morning that, that He can do the same thing for you and for me today as well. That even in the midst of all that we're living through right now, all of the chaos around us, right now, this Easter, Jesus can bring us joy. His presence is like the secret sauce that can bring us this peace that surpasses all understanding and this joy like we've never experienced before. And by now, you're probably saying to yourself, that sounds amazing, Chad, but how do I get that and what does it look like in my life? Is it as hard to find as a roll of toilet paper in the grocery store right now? Listen, I'm excited because today I get to talk with a friend. She's actually the wife of Pastor Kean, who you met a little bit earlier, but I've asked her to come and, and share her story about what finding peace and joy in the presence of Jesus looks like for her in this time of COVID-19. I want to welcome Lauren Kitagawa here with me today to share her testimony. And Lauren, welcome. And I just want to say that right now, you are glowing. And it's not because of all these lights, right? It's because you and Pastor Kian are getting ready to have your very first child, baby Ethan. Yeah. And so tell us, how far along are you right now? We're 34 weeks. Oh my gosh, 34 weeks. You guys are like right there at the tail end getting ready, yeah? yeah? And so tell us about the journey that you guys have been walking through as you've been getting ready. It's been really exciting. So Ethan's gonna be the first grandson on my family side and the first great-grandson. And then my mother-in-law's first grandchild. So we're super excited. We've been praying for him, praying for the timing. So this is really a great season. This baby been kicking a lot. Yeah. yeah, I remember all of those things when Emily and I were getting ready to have Malachi. And true story, um, I actually forgot to put the car seat in the car until the day that we were supposed to go. Emily wasn't happy about that one. But um, hey, it's not, it's not all excitement and anticipation. I know that. So maybe you can share a little bit about some of the fears and the worries that come along with the season that you guys are in as well. Um, well, I think in the beginning, I was really afraid of having a miscarriage. Um, 
especially in the first trimester. In the second trimester, I started to feel a little bit more joy, but then it became more of, am I going to be a good mom? Um, how do I keep him safe? How do I protect him? And so those are kind of the struggles that I was facing. Oh, absolutely. I think uh, every parent, every mom especially goes through that in a time of pregnancy. But how about this, um, you know, in this time with COVID-19 now and coronavirus, the fears must be heightened. The anxieties and the worries must be a little bit more than typical, I would think. So maybe you can walk us through um, how you've been walking through that. I think once uh, the coronavirus pandemic really elevated the the risk factor for us. Um, I've been worried about, is he gonna be okay? Is he gonna get sick? Can Kian be in the hospital with me? Um, am I gonna get separated from him after delivery? Um, I've been worried about my parents, um, Kian's parents, because they're in the high risk category and my dad has respiratory issues. Um, and as a high school counselor, I think about my seniors, you know, and graduation and if they're gonna make it. So it's been very stressful. I could imagine, man. As a former high school teacher, I was thinking oh, yeah. about those same things. What's going to happen with the seniors and school? I'm sure many parents can relate. And so, um, Lauren, why don't you tell me, like, how are you just making it day to day? And how do you find maybe your peace and your joy um, in this season? I think it would have looked very differently before I knew Jesus. Um, I was really struggling with depression and anxiety. I would have panic attacks at night. But now, knowing Jesus, I don't think it's perfect necessarily. But um, I do think that every day is different. Um, some days are harder than others. Some days I'm particularly worried. And then other days I'm trying to press into His Word um, and remember how faithful He's been. I mean, He's been super faithful healing my dad from cancer and so i know that his faithfulness will continue that's so good lauren i just want to say congratulations again and thank you so much for being vulnerable and sharing your story with us and hey i just want to say that i've been praying for you guys and especially i'm praying i'm praying hard that baby ethan looks more like you <laughs> than he does with pastor Keen. all right wasn't that super powerful did you see how finding peace and joy in His presence could look like. And I don't think it's just Lauren's story, man. I don't think it's just my story. I don't think it's just the story of the disciples. I absolutely believe that it could be your story as well. And some of you might be saying, Chad, I already know about the presence of Jesus. I've experienced the peace and joy that He brings. Well, my challenge to you would be this. How can you give that same peace and joy that you have away to others this Easter. Because in verse 21 of that same passage, Jesus tells His disciples, as the Father has sent me, so I'm sending you. You bring the joy. You bring the peace for those who are struggling around you. How's God calling you to do that? It could look like praying for a family member or a friend, dropping off some extra mangoes that you had from your tree to somebody that you know, Somebody did that for me this past week. Or maybe it looks like going shopping for someone who can't go for themselves, sharing the gospel with someone. And if this is your first time to church, I want to give you something practical to experience His joy and His peace as well. I'll tell you that just like Lauren shared, His presence is found in His Word. And I want, I want to challenge you that if you want to experience that peace and that joy, that we've been talking about, start with this. Start by taking just 10 minutes, 10 minutes each day and put down the social media, turn off the news and take 10 minutes. Download our church app, click on the devotions tab there and watch the video. That Just watch that short video. Not asking you to open a Bible or do anything like that. Just watch that video and test me on this. As you draw near to Jesus, simply by getting into His Word, getting to know Him a little bit better. The Bible promises that His presence will draw near to you as well. Whatever you do this week, family, don't let this Easter pass without taking time to practice being in His presence, getting in His Word, and finding the peace and the joy that's always available to us in Jesus. But can I tell you that He's not going to force His way in. In fact, we have to invite Him. 
Isn't that polite? I'm going to lead us in a prayer. And if this is your first time, you said, I've never done this before, you can just borrow my words as I pray us through this. Father God, today, I confess that I'm a sinner in need of a Savior. Today, I invite you, I invite your presence to come into my life. God, I need your peace. I need your joy. And so, Father, would you bring those things into my life? Help me to understand what it means to be in your presence and to follow you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen.